Here's another thing that can cause acute ischemia, thrombotic vasculopathy. And this is a kind of generic term that we use for anytime we see fibrin thrombi filling dermal blood vessels. Um, this, the thrombi in vessels, we call it thrombotic vasculopathy. It leads to acute ischemia in the skin and it can have a wide variety of causes, many of which are very serious. And so this needs to also be worked up urgently uh, by the clinical team with laboratory analysis to figure out why the person has thrombi. So inherited or acquired coagulopathies, uh, diffuse, uh, uh, um, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, um, hemolytic uremic syndrome, cryoglobulinemia is another one that a lot of times people don't think about, and it can look just like thrombi in the vessels. Um, all of those things are potentially gonna cause this pattern. So they have to clinically work this up right away to figure out what's going on. Here's an example of how this can present. It can look, um, depending on how severe it is and how many thrombi there are, the, the, it can present with various different patterns, but many times there's going to be this dusky, purpley, reddish color to the skin. And that's because as the thrombi cause ischemia, there also is hemorrhage as the, the skin begins to die. Eventually hemorrhage begins to happen as well. Um, and it can leak out into the dermis. All right, here's a, a, a picture of this um, on a biopsy. And you can see the epidermis is not totally necrotic, but it's starting to die right here. The nuclei are gone. And as it breaks down, it's starting to fall apart and lift away from the dermis and make a blister. You can also see down here, these pink fibrin thrombi in the vessels. Let's go in for a closer look at those. This is a really important distinction to make. This is a fibrin thrombus here, and so is this. And there's a tiny one right there. This is not a thrombus. This is blood engorged in a vessel, okay? A vessel that's dilated and filled with erythrocytes. When the blood has packed itself together in the vessel so tight like this, it can smudge together and look like it's filling the vessel and it can mimic a fibrin thrombus. Now, in this case, we've got both engorged vessels and fibrin thrombi, but sometimes, if you have one vessel that's just filled with blood, you can make the mistake of thinking it's a thrombus when it's actually not. So one trick, and I can't show you it here because I, um, I've just got pictures, but on your microscope, if you have a rack mounted condenser that you can flip up and down, when you're looking at higher power at the vessel, if you flip the condenser off, it'll make it look real dark through the oculars of your microscope. But one thing it helps is it helps three dimensional structures under the microscope to stand out better. It's a great way to see the, the desmosome spines between keratinocytes to help the collagen or elastic fibers stand out from one another. And it also helps the edges of erythrocytes to be more easily visualized. Whereas a fibrin thrombus is just gonna be a smudge of fibrin together, very homogenized, um, sometimes a little bit stringy. Here, you're gonna actually see individual outlines of erythrocytes. So that's one way to help you is by flipping the condenser off and on. Or sometimes if you don't have a condenser, you can move your finger back and forth under the light source and at the edge of where the shadow of your finger is, you'll be able to see that outline a little bit more clearly. So just one, one tip that you can try. And for those of you who take pictures for books or papers, I found actually just uh, not long ago, to my surprise, that taking pictures at higher power with the condenser flipped off can actually sometimes make much better, prettier pictures, particularly when you're taking pictures of keratinocytic lesions or the epidermis. It really makes those cells pop and stand out from one another. So there's a, there's a photography tip for you. Okay, so anyway, fibrin thrombi and hemorrhage. And also you'll note the color is a little different. With practice, you can see that uh, erythrocytes are a very bright, vivid reddish pink, whereas you kind of have a, a little bit more dull, pale pink in fibrin thrombi usually. Here's another fibrin thrombus. It's a little bit more bright pink in color, and it's probably been present for a little bit longer. Uh, there's another one there and one there because it's got some kind of reactive vascular change around the edge of it. And again, contrast that fibrin thrombus there to actual blood down here. 